Hello everyone, Stucky here, and welcome back to the History of Everything podcast YouTube channel. On today's episode, it's time for another Dumb Events in History. Personally, my favorite segment. I, I love actually doing these. And today we are going to tell the story about how a small town in West Virginia managed to get help from the Soviet Union and cause a massive embarrassment for the United States. Which, yep, yep, you heard me correctly, but how exactly does that happen? Well, let me explain. So this whole story takes place in southwest Virginia, near the border with Kentucky in the United States. There's this small, unincorporated community there named Vulcan. Now, mind you, Vulcan was once a thriving coal mining town. But back in the early 1960s, the mines that mined the coal dried up. And a bunch of the residents that were there decided to move away in search of employment elsewhere, as there really wasn't any other kind of industry in the town. No longer being a productive community, Vulcan's infrastructure would over time gradually deteriorate until eventually even the state government just forgot that the town existed. So goes the fate of many coal mining towns, actually. But forgetting about this town is exactly where we're going to start to run into a little bit of a problem. You see, the town of Vulcan was built on a fork of the Big Sandy River near the main line of the Norfolk and Western Railroad. Other than that railroad, there really was no infrastructure. There was no road that connected Vulcan to other towns or across the Kentucky River, only a very dinky little suspension bridge. And when I say dinky, I'm not exaggerating that. This was a very old bridge that was at this point falling apart in the 60s. It already had a series of floorboards missing, and this is what people were using, particularly the children, in order to get across and get to school every single day. Sometimes even in order to get to the bridge in the first place, the children had to crawl under railroad carts, which was a very dangerous practice that actually resulted in one of the kids getting his legs crushed one day. So now I know what you're going to say. Stack, okay, this can't be the only way in and out. There has to be something else that they can do. And you're right, there was. But there's another catch to it. You see, the alternate route was a gravel road that was maintained by the railroad company. This road ran parallel to the tracks, and it passed through Vulcan and continued north to the community of Delmore, which was located around five miles away. The problem was is that this road was not legally accessible to the public. The railroad company did not want anyone on this road and had hung no trespassing signs everywhere, stating that it was not their responsibility to maintain and protect people on the road as this was their property. Basically, the company going, yeah, whatever, it, guys, it, it's not our problem, who cares? So this continued for years until in 1975, the bridge finally collapsed, which then, of course, led the community to have no other alternative but to actually use the road that was illegal for them to trespass on to get out. But they don't want to break the law, so they instead try to do something and appeal to West Virginia's government, sending a letter asking them to help build a new bridge. But the officials of West Virginia didn't really see a point in doing so. I mean, this was just some small town of 200 people. It had no real industry, there was nothing productive about it, it wasn't providing anything to the state, so why should the state take care of it? They basically ignored it. So what can the townspeople do? Well, if the United States wasn't going to help, then they would have to look elsewhere. Thus, in 1977, their mayor wrote to the Soviet embassy in Washington, D.C., as well as officials in communist East Germany, describing Vulcan's plight and requesting foreign aid to help build a bridge. Yes, they reached out to the Soviets. Mind you, we are still in the middle of the Cold War, so the moment that the Soviets see an opportunity to embarrass the United States, they're like, hell yeah, of course we're gonna do that. So they go and dispatch some journalists to Vulcan, and by interviewing and broadcasting the locals' woes, the Soviets finally bring some attention to this little community that was being ignored by its own government. It did not take long before newspapers all across the country from coast to coast were talking about Vulcan, this little community that no one had ever actually heard of before. As an example, you have the Spokane Daily Chronicle, which wrote, and I quote, Soviet officials were amused today by reports that the small town of Vulcan, West Virginia, has appealed to the Kremlin for foreign aid. The town, with a population of 200, asked the Soviet government for financial help to build a bridge after the town was turned down by the U.S. and West Virginia governments. Which sounds absolutely hilarious, but also, again, you have to remember that this is in the middle of the Cold War, and there are some people that would not find this very funny. As news got out, radio stations and local newspapers in the area started receiving bomb threats from people all across the country, saying that if they received any form of red help whatsoever, whatever bridge or infrastructure or anything that was built would be destroyed. The situation was now taking a little bit of a darker turn. So on December 17th, 1977, the Soviets send down a senior journalist in order to interview the people of Vulcan and get a survey of what the problem is. And he was actually authorized to promise the locals that his government was going to keep an eye on the whole situation. If the U.S. would not do something about building this bridge, then the Soviet government would foot the bill and just get them their bridge. 
Almost immediately after this visit had taken place, word filtered into the town that the West Virginian government had, in an emergency session, gone ahead and authorized the building of a $1.3 million bridge. Because damn it, they weren't going to let the Soviets one-up them. And thus, two years later, Vulcan finally got its one-lane bridge connecting them to the outside world. And all it cost them was creating an international incident and embarrassing their own country. But everyone, that is the end of today's dumb event in history. Please let me know in the comment section what it is that you'd like us to cover next. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do everything you can to help support this video and this channel and the algorithm. I appreciate all of you, and I will see you all next time. Thank you, everyone, and goodbye.